If you've been watching my channel at all, you know that I love selling bread and butter. And the reason for that is because that's what is easily accessible to me. That's what I'm comfortable with. And I know a lot of people like to shop for these kinds of brands because it's what they're comfortable with. They know how these things are gonna fit on their body. They know what size they are. They know what to expect. And so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about men's bread and butter brands and styles that you can consistently sell for $25 or more. Stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I'm a part-time reseller on a variety of reselling platforms. I live in the Midwest in central Illinois. We are not necessarily surrounded by glitz and glamour. And so a lot of what I find at my local thrift stores and a lot of what my friends sell and what my own family wears is just very bread and butter basic brands. A lot of mall brands, a lot of things that you can find at department stores. And because of that reason, I feel like I have really grown my knowledge on how to sell bread and butter brands well. On top of that, I really enjoy selling men's clothes for a number of reasons. One, even though I know a lot of people think it's kind of boring because it's a lot of like the same kind of stuff. It's, you know, you've got khakis and you've got polo shirts and, you know, it's kind of all relatively the same. I like selling men's clothes because it sells really well. I find that men are less finicky when it comes to shopping. A lot of times they'll purchase things outright and they sell really well. And so for those reasons, in today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 different brands that I consider bread and butter brands, brands that for where I live, I am finding consistently and selling consistently for $25 or more, depending on the style and obviously the condition. And then I'll end this video with different categories of men's clothing that sells really well. So, you know, they may consist of some of the brands that I will be talking about as my top 10, but they may also consist of different brands. By the way, I do also have a bread and butter video on women's clothing as well as on bread and butter shoes. So definitely make sure that you check out those videos as well. I'll have them linked down in the description below, but let's jump right into it. Okay, so we're gonna talk about my top 10 bread and butter men's brands to sell. And these are in no particular order, but first we're gonna talk about Banana Republic. Banana Republic is also one of the brands that showed up on my women's list, and I would say it is just as consistent of a seller and just as consistent in terms of me being able to find it where I live as the women's clothing from Banana Republic. Banana Republic is a store found at many malls throughout America. They are really well known for their career wear pieces they use a lot of really good materials, a lot of good fabrics, a lot of like wool. Sometimes they use cashmere, um, especially like Banana Republic men. I feel like they're known for their cashmere cotton silk blend. You know, they have a lot of clothes like sweaters and shirts that are made out of cashmere cotton silk, but they make a lot of great pieces for the office. They also make a lot of great like business casual pieces, like things that you would wear to church or to like a nice dinner. They also have more formal wear. They have straight up suits. They have things that you could wear to weddings um, and just, you know, even plain t-shirts, things like undershirts, uh, you know, jeans. They really have it all. And because it's got such a classic classic look to it, it is a store that men will return to time and time again because one, they know how they fit at Banana Republic, they know what size they are. Banana Republic will also do some specialized sizing like tall lengths or, you know, short length pants, things of that nature. And Banana Republic also has specific styles for things like their pants, for things like their jeans. So you can get like the Emerson Chino or you can get like the Gavin pants. You know, they have like a specific style name so especially when men can figure out like, ooh, I know how the Emerson Chino fits on me and I really like it, they may be inclined to get one in every single color because they don't have to think so hard about trying other styles. They already found one that works for them. Now, when it comes to finding Banana Republic pieces that are gonna sell for $25 or more, I would say stick to their classics. Um, a lot of their sweaters, a lot of their blazers, a lot of their suiting, that stuff is definitely gonna go for $25 or more. Where you might have a little bit harder of a time is just like Banana Republic button-up shirts or even their jeans. Banana Republic jeans are great. They're good quality. They're just not very well known for 
their jeans. So it's not like people are going out of their way to pick up their jeans. Um, their career pants can do well, but you want to make sure that it is a modern recent style. And if you look underneath the care tag of Banana Republic clothing, they usually have a little tiny tag that has a style number and the year that that particular piece was released. So you can make sure that you don't have an ancient piece of clothing on your hands, but something that is modern and trending right now. So Banana Republic, for all those reasons, is going to be the first bread and butter brand that we talk about in this video. Brand number two is Nike. Now, I always say this when I talk about Nike. Nike is such a big brand. There is so much that falls under the umbrella of Nike. And Nike is also one of the brands that showed up in my shoes bread and butter video. Nike is an older brand. It's been around for a while. And it's one of those brands where like, if you can find the vintage stuff, it does really, really well, as well as the modern stuff, the stuff in between, not so much. Banana Republic, I would say, if you're finding really old Banana Republic, I don't think it's really worth picking up. But Nike, if it's single stitch, if it's vintage, if it's a center swoosh, if it's all those kinds of things, you might have some really good money on your hands. The difficult thing is learning the different nuances of what makes Nike valuable. But as far as what is going to be a home run every time almost regardless are things like Nike jackets a lot of Nike shoes especially if they're in really good condition even things like Nike swim trunks Nike joggers those kinds of things can do really well Nike also has a lot of kind of specific I wouldn't call them brands but specific like subsets of their brand. So they've got Nike Dry Fit, they've got Nike Pro, they've got Nike Running. They've got a lot of little subsets and some of those will do better than others. For example, I feel like it's really hard for me to keep Nike Pro in my closet or in my store because they sell so quickly. Now, does all Nike Pro sell for $25 or more? No, but it's usually a very quick flip. So with Nike, I would say bigger sizes are always gonna do a little bit better. If you can find the vintage stuff, that's amazing. And the things that are gonna make you $25 or more, like I mentioned already, are the outerwear, are things like shoes, or things like joggers and pants and swim trunks. What you want to stay away from are just kind of basic tees. Again, if they're vintage, that's another story, but basic tees, um, you want to stay away from jerseys that nobody cares about, but jerseys, again, are another really great thing if you can find ones for good teams and good players. Um, you want to stay away from just like basic shorts, but again, Nike is another brand that has a style number number on the tag underneath the care tag and you can look up that style number to see what it is that you have in your hands. Just type in Nike into Google and then the numbers that you see for the style number and then there'll be a dash with three more numbers usually and the three numbers after the dash are the colorway. So it's going to tell you what color the item is. So if you type that into Google, you should be able to figure out what that item is called and then you can type the title of that item into eBay or Poshmark, look up comps and see if you have something valuable on on your hands. Other Nike things that can do well are bags, are like specialty sport equipment. Like if you find Nike snowboarding boots, they don't make them anymore and that's why they're a little bit sought after. Nike golf, you know, all that kind of specific sporting stuff. Some of it can do well, but with Nike, because there's so much out there, you just want to do your research and they make it easy with their style number. You guys, there's weird lighting coming in and out. I'm so sorry. Brand number three that we're going to talk about is Tommy Bahama. I'll be honest with you. I passed on a lot of Tommy Bahama when I first started reselling because I think I was like usually picking up women's stuff and women's Tommy Bahama for me doesn't do very well. However, Tommy Bahama for men can sell pretty consistently for $25 or more. They are really well known for their silk shirts. They're button up kind of like Hawaiian tropical shirts. Those can if you find them in really good sizes so you know the bigger the better if you find them in good sizes and in good condition they can sell for $25 or more it's not guaranteed but I've even sold like polos by them for like $30 to $35. I've sold shorts and pants by them for $25 or more. So really like a lot of Tommy Bahama is going to do really well for you. Again, the things that I would stay away from are basic tees, are Tommy Bahama jeans. I don't know that I've had very much luck with their jeans, but their shorts, their like khaki chino type pants, their polo shirts and their button ups, especially that's where the money's going to be with Tommy Bahama. I find a lot of it in my area. Usually it's in 
in pretty decent condition and it flips very quickly and for good money. The next brand that we're gonna talk about is L.L. Bean. L.L. Bean is a brand that's been around for a while. They're known for a very classic clean look. They create a lot of apparel that's really appropriate for wearing outdoors to do outdoorsy things like fishing and camping and hiking and I don't know, I can keep listing things, but I'll stop. Um, but they also create clothes that you can wear to the office. They have, you know, chinos and they have button up shirts. I would say that where your money is gonna be made when it comes to L.L. Bean are in their fishing shirts. They have a lot of like those vented fishing shirts. They also have some really great flannels that work because men like them, but also you can sell them on like Poshmark or Depop as oversized, just kind of like shackets or flannels. Flannels are always in I feel like. You can also do pretty decent with some L.L. Bean denim. It just kind of depends. Um, L.L. Bean will make denim sometimes that L.L. Bean will come out with denim sometimes that's like fleece lined and a lot of their vintage stuff can do really well. So with L.L. Bean I would say kind of you know I feel like a broken record here but you want to stay away from just like basic tees. Um, I haven't had that much luck with just like cotton button-up shirts that are meant to be worn to the office like you know nicer preppier shirts unless again, it's vintage and it's got like a really cool print or pattern, but where you're going to do really well with L.L. Bean is anything that is kind of like outdoorsy, you know, their jackets are going to do really great for you, um, fishing shirts, anything that's like very nylon-y, anything that's meant to be worn outdoors while doing outdoorsy things, that is probably something worth looking up. And their shorts I've done okay with, especially again, if they're a little bit more outdoorsy. And then finally, if you find fleece line jeans, those have done really well for me as well. The next brand that we're gonna talk about is Levi's. Levi's is a classic brand. It's what we all kind of associate with denim at this point. And while there are certainly some denim styles that will do much better than others, I'm thinking like 5'11s, I'm also thinking vintage Levi's. What I have found is it doesn't even matter. I can sell almost every single pair of Levi's that I find in good condition for $25 or more on reselling platforms like Poshmark and eBay for men. So yeah, if you find some of these more desirable styles you can probably sell them for you know 50 60 70 dollars depending on how current they are depending on their condition and if you find again the really old stuff you're gonna do really well with that stuff as well but it honestly almost doesn't even matter if you find Levi's in good condition there is someone out there that likes that style and if you list it someone is most likely going to buy those pair of jeans for $25 or more because Levi's is known for denim and they're known for good construction the exception would be like the Levi's denizen that's a lower tier line of Levi's I would say um, for the most part though anything else is going to sell pretty well for you for $25 or more so with Levi's my recommendation is going to be stick with their denim. You can also do like denim jackets and stuff. Those will do really well. I would not do t-shirts that say Levi's. I don't even know what else they sell, but yeah, I would stick to their denim. The next brand that we're going to talk about is Carhartt. Carhartt is one of those brands that people wear to do things like construction work, to work outdoors in, because it's so durable, but it has become really popular even amongst those who are just wearing it just for fashion versus, you know, wearing it to do work in. And therefore, I feel like there's such a big market for Carhartt because you've got the people who want to wear it just to kind of be fashionable, but then you also have the people who want to wear it because it's the best thing for them to wear to their job. So I would say with Carhartt, you have a lot of luck with a lot of different things things that they make. You have a lot of luck with even just their like button up shirts. I've sold like plaid button up shirts by them, you know, short sleeve, long sleeve, it doesn't matter for $25, $35. I've sold their denim. I've sold their pants. I've sold really beat up and busted overalls with paint and oil splattered all over them. It almost doesn't matter. A lot of it is going to sell for $25 or more. Again, you want to stay away from maybe just super basic t-shirts, although even their plain work shirts can do pretty decently, but Carhartt is just such a winner. And if you can find their jackets, like their work jackets, holy cow, you've got probably at least 50, 60, $70 on your hands right there because their jackets are kind of the epitome of the Carhartt look that people are shopping for. And with Carhartt, especially with those jackets, not only are men purchasing them, but women are purchasing them as well. The next brand that we're going to talk about is Polo Ralph Lauren. Polo Polo Ralph Lauren is pretty iconic. It is a sub-brand of Ralph Lauren. It's got the little 
guy on the horse, I guess they're playing polo. Is polo played on horses? I don't even know. Oh, I got the hook and the ball. What a play by Pierre. It's incredible stuff here. But it is a very preppy brand. It's a very classic brand. It's very Americana. And it is a brand that sells really well online, which I didn't really know. I definitely underestimated the value of this brand. And I have passed on a lot of Polo Ralph Lauren in my day. But if you want to see a lot of Polo Ralph Lauren for men's at one time, I do have a haul video that I did not too long ago that I will link right here where a friend of mine just kind of offloaded all of his clothes on me before he moved and he had a lot of Polo Ralph Lauren. So if you want to see what it looks like, I'll show it to you in that video. But Polo Ralph Lauren does really well because similar to Banana Republic, it is a brand that can be worn casually. You know, you can just wear it going on vacation with your family, like going to the zoo or going to whatever. Like you can wear it casually, but you can also wear it to work. You know, they have have a lot of really great business type pieces, not necessarily, well, they might have suits and stuff, but they have a lot of great like button up shirts. They have a lot of really great, you know, polo shirts and whatnot. But the thing that Polo Ralph Lauren also has going for it that I would say Banana Republic does not is they also have that street cred of vintage Polo Ralph Lauren being considered almost streetwear and vintage Polo Ralph Lauren being extremely desirable. So you've got kind of a deeper bench when it comes to Polo Ralph Lauren and the things that are gonna have value from that brand. Um, the kinds of things that I have done really well with when it comes to Polo Ralph Lauren, any sort of jacket. I have done really well with even just their polo shirts. Sometimes I'm able to sell their short sleeve polos, long sleeve polos for $25 or more. I've had really good luck with their sweat Sweaters. Um, they have a lot of like big bulky kind of like cardigan type things like sweaters that you could wear to work with like a button up shirt underneath, you know, all that kind of stuff where I do struggle to sell items for $25 or more are button up shirts. I just have a very hard time with button up shirts in general. I think I get too impatient and let things go for too little really quickly because I just want to get those out of my house. But button up shirts I have kind of a hard time with. And I'm trying to think. They do sell pants and stuff. I don't know that I've ever had too much luck with pants. But I think it's really in their sweaters, their polos, that sort of thing that you can make a pretty penny on. At least sell the item for $25 or more in many instances. The next brand that we're going to talk about is kind of the opposite of Polo Ralph Lauren. And that is a affliction where Polo Ralph Lauren is teddy bears and it is, you know, preppy men riding horses and doing all these different things. Um, affliction is like skulls and acid wash and like bones and, you know, that kind of thing. Affliction, I think it's sold at Buckle, but it's that vibe. It's just very buckly. I don't know how else to put it, but Affliction sells pretty well. And again, this is a brand that I underestimated mainly because it's not my cup of tea. It's not the kind of stuff that I'm like bringing home for my husband to wear and stuff, but even their pretty simple short sleeve t-shirts, especially the reversible ones, they can sell for $25 or more. They have a lot of like button up shirts again with like the leather trim and they've got skulls and they've got all that kind of stuff can sell for $25 or more. I don't know that I've ever seen a pair of Affliction jeans. Let me know in the comments if you've ever seen Affliction jeans. But their top, surprisingly, even though some of these pieces are like really thin and I don't get it, they can sell for $25 or more. So if you find Affliction, definitely worth looking up comps for that item. The next brand that we're gonna talk about is Orvis. Orvis is definitely an outdoorsy type brand. They have a lot of fishing gear. For example, I just sold a pair of, what was it called? It's like, it's like these boots that you, oh, fly fishing, fly fishing boots. They had like felt on the bottom. I was like, what is going on here? But those sold for like 60 bucks. But yeah, Orvis is a great brand that has a lot of value, especially in the outdoorsy stuff. They have some basic things. They have just like basic button up shirts or basic sweaters and whatnot. I would steer clear of those, but I would stick to their fishing gear, their hunting gear, anything that is made for a specific outdoor purpose. Um, I would definitely look those up because chances are are, that item is worth $25 or more. And the last brand that we're going to talk about in today's video is Brooks Brothers. Brooks Brothers, I would say, is 
a more refined, more sophisticated, and definitely more expensive Banana Republic. It is also a mall brand, although it's not as commonly found in malls across America as Banana Republic. Brooks Brothers is well known for their career pieces. You know, you can find button-up shirts, you can find polo shirts, you can find nice slacks and chinos, but you can also find suits, and they are just extremely preppy and just extremely expensive retail, and therefore you can get away with selling their stuff for a good amount when you list it online. Um, I recently sold a jacket. It was like a khaki colored uh, trench coat by Brooks Brothers for I want to say like $90 or something like that. I've sold sweaters by them, pants, all sorts of things. And I would say the majority of what I have found at Brooks Brothers sells for $25 or more. So um, it's a little bit harder to find than some of the brands that I've mentioned today. But depending on where you live, depending on what kind of stores are at your mall, you might be able to find Brooks Brothers even at your own thrift stores. So now that we've talked about 10 different menswear brands that I feel like are pretty accessible, you probably are going to be able to find these pretty easily. Let's talk about a few different categories of menswear that I have found a lot of success with. And these might incorporate brands that I didn't even mention, but these are just categories to be on the lookout for. So the first category that we'll talk about is vintage. Vintage is just on fire right now. Like if you can find anything from the 90s, 80s, Y2K, if you can find nostalgia type t-shirts, you know, anything with like Rugrats or Looney Tunes or old Disney, that kind of stuff can do really well. Um, if you can find the old Nike, old sports team stuff, these are the kinds of things that people are looking for because this is what's trending right now is taking a visit back to different decades and reliving the past by wearing clothes that came from those decades. So if you are able to find vintage almost anything, you're going to be able to make $25 or more if it's still in pretty good condition and if it's still somewhat desirable. The next category that we'll talk about is golf. I have been having so much success selling men's golf attire, whether it's polo shirts, whether it's golf shorts or golf pants, um, like golf pullovers, golf stuff is selling so well right now and generally sells really well. Obviously, there are some golf brands that are better than others, like FootJoy is great. Even Nike Golf is not bad. There are probably a lot more that I don't know about, but even brands like Walter Hagen, I've done really well with. Jack Nicholas, I've done well with. I usually say his name wrong. So if you find golf stuff for men and it's in good condition, it's in a good size, I would definitely at least look it up because chances are it's worth $25 or more. The next category that we'll talk about is career wear. A lot of the brands that I mentioned today, brands like L.L. Bean, brands like Banana Republic and Brooks Brothers, they carry career wear pieces. And this is definitely something that men need in their life and they don't want to have to buy too many pieces. So a lot of men are willing to pay a good amount for good, classic, well-constructed pieces that are going to last them a while. So if you run across anything that looks really well made, it's made of good materials, it's made of things like cashmere and wool and linen, those are the kinds of things that even if you don't know the brand, I would take a moment to look it up because if you've got a 100% cashmere sweater on your hands, it doesn't matter what the brand says. If it's something that a man could wear to work and it's in good condition, and there are no holes in that cashmere sweater, you best be picking that up. Career wear pieces, while they may sit for a little bit, they can sell for $25 or more, depending on the brand, depending on the condition, depending on, you know, the style, make sure it's pretty recent looking. You know, a lot of the like pleated dress pants aren't gonna do super well right now because that's just not what's trending, but kind of know what's modern and trending right now. And a lot of those pieces can make you $25 or more. The next category that we'll talk about is fishing. I've talked a lot about a lot of brands that do sell fishing, you know, shirts and tops, brands like L.L. Bean, brands like Orvis, but a lot of fishing specific clothing can do really well because man, people who like to fish, like to fish. I have an uncle who went fishing a lot. Um, it's not like I ever asked him about the clothes that he wore or what he preferred, but I imagine that fishing is one of those things that if you don't have the right attire, you're just way more uncomfortable 
comfortable than you need to be. If you are a fisherman or fisherwoman, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are about that. Especially if you're the type of fisherman that goes into the water, so like fly fishing and whatnot. I mean, I guess fishing from a boat could still be the same way or fishing from, you know, like land. But in general, it just seems like you want the right stuff to fish in. Otherwise, you're just a little bit miserable. But the last category that we're going to talk about is hunting gear. I have had a lot of success selling, you know, things that are in that camo print, real tree print. I don't know. There's a lot of different prints for things that make you look like you're a part of nature. I personally do not hunt. I have fished before. I actually really enjoy fishing. I've never gone hunting. Don't see myself doing it. But there are a lot of people here in the Midwest that do go hunting. So I find a lot of hunting apparel, specifically like hunting cargo pants and like the ones that cinch in around the ankle. Like there's a drawstring or like an elastic, uh, like a bungee or something. Um, and those things tend to sell for you know, $25, $35. And so if you can find those for a good price, definitely worth picking up. But even hunting jackets, even like there are clothes that have different technology that like eliminate your smell. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff out there for people who like to hunt. So if you find stuff like that, look it up. Chances are you've got $25 or more in your hands. I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. Which men's brands are you sourcing right now? Which men's brands are you having a lot of luck selling and are you finding pretty easily? There are a lot of great men's brands out there like Untuck It, PRPS. I don't know. There's like a ton that are really great that are really high end. I don't find those brands very often. I actually still to this day have never found an untuck it shirt. Like even though I feel like it's a little bit more popular now, there are a lot of great menswear brands, but the point of today's video was what are menswear brands that can make you good money that you probably are seeing at the thrift store. You just didn't even know that those things were worth $25 or more. So let us know, let the community know about your men's bread and butter brands down in the comments below so that we can all learn from one another. I'm so curious to hear your thoughts thoughts. And if you know of any other categories that sell really well for men, share those with us as well. If you learned anything from this video, I would super duper appreciate you hitting that like button just because it does help YouTube just kind of spread the love of this video a little bit more, you know, to other people on YouTube. And if you're brand new to my channel, first of all, thank you for popping in and please consider hitting that subscribe button if you want to learn more about bread and butter brands to resell online. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!